All right, so kind of a follow-up to my Inscriber automation video. I'm going to do some videos about spe the specifics of how to automate the Inscribers with various methods. So the first one I'm going to do is XNet. So here I've got kind of a template AE system set up with some raw materials and everything. And actually, I need the stuff so that it can auto-craft. So let's go ahead and grab one of these. And that so we can watch it. All right, so I've got it kind of set up and ready to automate. And this screen is gonna monitor the buffer chest so we can kind of see what's going on. So the first one I'm gonna do is with XNet. So let's just say that, you know, power is gonna come from there. There's wherever your power source is coming from. Don't need that anymore, that anymore. So let's go ahead and throw a controller down. And I'm going to be using advanced connectors for this just because it makes it far more compact. Get that there. So this is going to be the chest. That's going to be our power source. So then I'm just going to run the cable out here. And we're going to throw some inscribers on. Which let's kind of space it just so they're up kind of eye level. So there's our five inscribers. So our first one here is going to do gold, so it's going to be making logic processors. The second one is going to do diamonds, so it's going to take the engineering processors. Our third one here is going to take the pure certus, so it's going to take the calculation processors. And the fourth one here is going to press silicon into the printed silicon. So, you can put these connectors wherever you want. I'm just going to throw them on the back, just so they're cleaner. And I guess we don't need these cables. So, this is our logic one. So, I'm just going to name it so we can tell them apart. This is our engineering one. This is our calculation one. And this is our silicon. And then this is our final one that pro uh, finishes off the processor. <laughs> so, what you're going to want to do is first we're going to want to give power to all those. So let's create an energy channel that extracts from our, whatever our energy source is. And gives it, actually we need to jump start the controller. There you go. So it's going to give power to the controller, and it's also going to give power to all of our inscribers. So now they're all fully charged up. So the first thing I like to do is we're going to call this like something like raw mats. And let's go ahead and get some samples of these. So like a diamond, a gold, a pure, a redstone, and a silicon. So what we're going to do is raw mats here is going to pull from the buffer chest. And it's going to pull all these things. And let's just go ahead and match metadata. And it's going to extract. So our first one here, now we need to see... So inscribers, you need to basically go in one side and out the other. So this is south, and that is north. So that's all going to go in the south and out the north. So we're going to say... Here's our logic one. So we're going to insert from the south and if you're using non-advanced connectors you'd have to actually have connectors on one side and the other to be able to push and pull in and pull out so we're going to insert from the south 
and we're going to insert gold. So we've got logic getting at gold, engineering needs to go in from the south and it gets a diamond. The calculation ones get a pure certus and metadata just in case on that one. And then silicon goes in here. So now if we were to throw some of these in there, they would get pressed, but I don't quite want to do that yet. So we're going to make kind of an intermediary channel here that's going to take the three processor presses and put them in the correct slot of the final inscriber. So this is going to extract on the north, extract on the north, extract on the north, and it's going to insert into the final inscriber on the top. And then I'm going to make another one here. And it's going to extract from the north and insert into the bottom of the final. And finally, our raw materials one here is going to insert redstone into the south. Then all we need is the final end product and it's going to extract from the north and insert back into the interface. So we should be ready. So now if I were to throw a redstone, a silicon, and a gold, they should get pressed and get pressed into the final processor. And then it gets thrown back in the interface. So now it's in here. So now what we want to do is make our patterns. So it's going to be a processing pattern so that it throws items into this chest. So we're going to say, okay, for... We're going to want... So a gold, a redstone, and a silicon equals a logic processor. And a diamond, a redstone, and a silicon. In fact, let's run that through now so we can get one. Let's get some acceleration cards so these go a bit faster. Alright, so we should have the diamond one to do now. Okay. And then a pier. So I need another silicon and redstone. So pier, silicon, redstone. Oh, whoops. That was uh, me shift clicking when I shouldn't have. And calculation processor. Whoops. In there. So now, if I ask for 16 logic processors, it loads all the materials into the chest and they start getting processed and they start flowing back in. So it's actually going at a pretty good speed with all those speed upgrades. So this is pretty much the simplest way to do it with XNet and it also works pretty quick. Sometimes I change up the channels a bit so this acts like a buffer chest so all the intermediary presses end up in here. That way if I end up with like an extra pressed circuit or something in my inventory, I can throw it in here and it'll just go ahead and make the processor. 
but you know there's lots of different ways of doing this and this is just uh my favorite way so until next time guys see you later